what would a world look like without genocide or crimes against humanity? Um, but it obviously look a lot better than what we have today. We concluded, I concluded, that genocide has been committed in Darfur. Gender-based violence across the world is an epidemic and I think stems from this deeply held notion of women as inferior. The biggest problem is the subjugation of the feminine. So the world without genocide, my mind, is a world in which uh, the, the feminine power is equal or perhaps even greater than the masculine power. The End of Atrocity is a project of three generations that creates a vision of what our world would be free of genocide and crimes against humanity. Inspired by His Holiness the Dalai Lama, who teaches that vision is essential in reaching our goals, The End of Atrocity is an ongoing collection of the inspirations and hopes of visionaries and activists. I think what it would enable us to do if there wasn't genocide was be able to concentrate our efforts on so many other things of benefiting people's lives. We spend hundreds of millions of dollars trying to prevent genocide, to raise awareness about genocide, to support those that are affected by genocide. And if genocide didn't occur, we'd be able to spend that money on lifting people out of poverty. Two things when I think about a world without genocide. One is a world in which women can live uh, in freedom from being afraid for their lives. And the other is freedom from slavery. You have to tell the story to your children to try to prevent. This is the cause that we have to proclaim always. A world without genocide would remove, frankly speaking, much of the death and destruction of innocent civilian life from war War will be with us, but genocide doesn't have to be. A world without genocide is a world where we can accept that someone has one religion, another person has another religion. We can live together side by side, not seek to convert. This is the only way we can go forward. A world with no genocide is a world with a global community who protect each citizen in Darfur, in Rwanda, or wherever. Well, you have to have a vision. I mean, if you don't, if you can't visualize something better, there's nothing to follow. I mean, Martin Luther King gave that famous speech for a reason, because he had that vision, and then he was able to sort of give that vision to other people, and it, and it gave us a map of where to go. Now it's time for the next step, you know. We create compassion, empathy compassion, outrage. We're standing on that precipice as a human species. Mm -hmm.